Hello, welcome to Lesson 11. We are moving on through the book of Galatians. I really do appreciate you being with me today. We are going to be finishing Galatians and going to the Sermon on the Mount. That's what the next curriculum says. And so, um, walking by the Spirit. Uh, we're going to be talking about the Holy Spirit and the fruits of the Spirit today. We're in Galatians chapter 5, 16 through 26. Our main idea today is the Christian life is a battleground, not a playground. I think it can be play sometimes, but um, it's up and down and around, isn't it? We don't know what each day will hold, but, um, you know, we have our days, don't we? Um, studying liked it to understand that even when we come to Christ, the struggle's not over. Paul talked about this internal struggle. He says, you know, there's things that I really know I need to do, things I want to do, but um, here you go. Sometimes I just don't. And uh, Paul believed that even when a believer came to Christ, we still had this sin nature. So you got the Holy Spirit, that part of God that lives within you, that moves in. It's a real thing, and um, it's very mysterious, but it's real. And the day that you become a believer, uh, the Spirit of God moves in and tries to make you like the person of Jesus. And so, um, but see, see, you got this this battle going on within you, and. Uh, no, God still gives you free will. You can choose to be what you're going to be and do what you're going to do. And uh, so there's a war going on within us sometimes. Uh, and I tell you, um, you know, I've, I've, uh, I don't know how, how you grew up. I grew up out in the country and dogs are just everywhere. Um, here in Azel, in my neighborhood, if a dog is out, it starts showing up on Facebook. Oh, there's a dog out, and there he is, and somebody needs to go get him, and you know all that. Where I grew up, dogs just kind of wander around, and uh, they would fight. And you know, one thing you learn as a kid: don't ever get in between two dogs that are fighting, because then they'll bite you instead of each other. And the, the saying is that the dog that gets fed the most normally is the stronger dog, and um, that's kind of how it is spiritually. The uh, the nature that you feed, uh, either your spiritual godly nature, uh, if you feed that by prayer and Bible study and um, being with other believers and worshiping and all those kinds of things, then it's going to be stronger than the old sin nature that uh, gets fed naturally by things around us. You can just turn the TV on and it's getting fed in a negative way. So um, well, there is a struggle. So this is a different topic this week dealing with the Spirit. He's still going to, he's still trying to convince these readers to stay under grace through faith and not works uh, because you just can't, is that's just not going to work. It's not going to happen for you to be right with God based on something you can do. So, um, you know, I think this lesson's important too um, because, you know, there's a lot of things you need to teach a, a new believer. Um, you need to uh, get to them very quickly and teach them how to pray and how to read their Bible and, and the importance of fellowship and things like that because um, they don't know. And so when you have to teach them that, I think you also teach them stuff like put your faith in God and don't put your faith in people because people will fail you. Uh, please don't focus on me or these church staff people. We're human and we make mistakes and, uh, it's just the way of the world. And so uh, let's go ahead and look at the text. Uh, good stuff this week. Divided up the text, uh, Galatians 16 through, let's see, 18, talking about walking by the Spirit. And um, he, he has a middle paragraph in here where he talks about the acts of, of the flesh. Um, 
So we'll talk about that. And then he talks about the fruits of the Spirit. So a lot different lesson this week, which I welcome. I think that he has pounded home his point about works. But uh, let's read the first passage. So I say, walk by the Spirit. And this is Spirit with a capital S. It's the Holy Spirit. And you will not gratify the desires of the flesh. For the flesh desires what is contrary to the spirit and the spirit what is contrary to the flesh they were in conflict with each other so that you're not so so that you are not to do whatever you want that's an interesting point but if you're led by the spirit you're not under the law so he gets in this thing about the law uh, in here and he, he talks about the flesh and it's an interesting word to use. He's not p particularly talking about flesh like this flesh. He's talking about a sinful nature that resides in us. Now, there's all kinds of ideas about this sinful nature. Um, the early church um, struggled with this whole idea. Is it, is it, is it generational? Is it a, a physical thing where um, it's uh, genetically uh, passed down generation to generation? That was an important um, idea with Mary. Um, you know, if, if sin could be genetically um, transmuted generationally between people, um, then... You know, that's why the early church came up with the idea that not only was uh, Jesus miraculously conceived by the Spirit of the Lord, that Mary was also. And so that's where that comes from. Um, what he's talking about is just the sinful nature that we all have. It's like if you take any one of us and put us in the garden, we're going to mess up just like Adam and Eve did. It's it's a it's part of the human race, uh, but he calls it the flesh. And, um, you know, you're going to be led by something. He says, walk by the spirit. And uh, if you do that, you're not going to gratify the desires of the flesh. So the, the, the old sinful nature will lead you to a place that's not good for you. Um, you know, they're in conflict with one another. And you just can't do what you may want to do. Um, you know, that's the great thing about humans is we have a will. And uh, we uh, can, can choose as part of being made in the nature of God. But he says, if you're led by the Spirit, you're not under the law. Um you know, the Spirit will show you what is right and what is wrong. Uh, he will be your counselor. The Bible describes him like a person, and that's why we talk about the Trinity, the third person of the Trinity, the Holy Spirit. So um, we all recognize that. Um, we never get to the point where you're so perfect and you're so Christ-like that... Um, you you uh, aren't there. I mean, you don't have that 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 war going on with uh, within you. I mean, look at Paul. Paul had his issues. Uh, he had a falling out with Barnabas about John Mark um, because Mark left him on the first missionary journey, and it caused division. Um, and Paul was mad about it, and it's like, no, I'm not taking that kid with us on this next missionary trip. So he parted ways, and, and, you know, all things work together for good. God used it, and later Paul reconciled with Mark. But Paul wasn't perfect. Paul had his own sin nature. Um, you know, he, he, he was, got angry about things, and he was hurt by things. He wasn't Christ-like in everything that he did. Uh, he was human, and we are too. And so the point is, decide who's going to lead your life. Is it going to be just you and you're just going to do whatever you think and, uh, you know, you're going to just surrender to the flesh or are you going to be spirit led? 
that's really God's will for us. Let's read the, he goes next and he says, okay, here are the things that the flesh will lead you into, and they're not good. Uh, they will destroy you as a person. Verse 19, he says, the acts of the flesh are obvious. Sexual immorality, you know, you know, within marriage, it's a beautiful thing. It's a perfect thing. Outside of marriage, it's immoral. Sexual immorality, impurity and debauchery. Uh, this culture is just so um, sick with it. Idolatry and witchcraft. Hatred. Oh, my gosh. Um, you would think in 2023 we'd be better as, as people, but hatred is just rampant in it. Uh, discord everywhere. Jealousy. Mm -hmm. uh, fits of rage. Oh, we're beyond that. We've, we've evolved as people. Really? Uh, selfish ambition. You know, I'm going to get what I want no matter what, and it doesn't matter who I've got to run over to get it. Uh, dissensions. Factions. Even at church. Factions. Envy. Wanting something that's not mine. Uh, instead of working for something, just going and taking it. Drunkenness. Uh, you know, you got to find balance here. The, the Bible condemns uh, any time that you are not in charge of your mental faculties. That's the problem with drugs and alcohol is you're not in charge. You're doing things that you don't even have self-control over. Orgies. Um, you know, this is sexual immorality. And the like. Um, I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. If 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 the flesh so takes over your being that you don't even recognize God's will, then something is wrong. Okay, if you practice these things. Uh, then something's wrong with your with your soul, and you need to repent of it and be right with God. Uh, and you have the ability to do that by repenting of it. He's going to change gears now, and he's going to go to the opposite extreme and talks about the fruit of the Spirit. And uh, you know what's interesting is if you've got the Spirit, these attributes reside in you. Now, you can block it. You can choose to not use these gifts, but they're there, okay? You don't have, you know, you each person who gets the Spirit gets a spiritual gift. and But you don't have all the spiritual gifts that the Bible describes. You probably have one or two, maybe. But when you get the Spirit, you get all of these fruits. Now, he calls it the fruit of the Spirit in that it's a package, okay? It's not... This fruit, that's this. This is all the fruit of the spirit that's within you, and and that is where I get the whole idea that you've got all of them. Okay, it's a fruit. It means that when the spirit is within you, these things come forth. Here we go. But the fruit of the spirit is love. It's joy. Um, your joy could be robbed. Don't let the world rob it. Uh, peace means I'm at peace with myself and the world, even though the world is crumbling, but my peace comes from you, Lord. Uh, forbearance, kindness, simple kindness. Man, that's missing in it. Uh, goodness, just plain old goodness, being a, a good person. Uh, faithfulness, hmm. uh, gentleness. Last one, self-control. I sometimes wonder, do I have self-control? It's there. I just need to let it come forth. Again, such thing against things there's such things there's no law. It means it's there. Uh, the The intent of the law is fulfilled by a spirit-filled person letting God bless them and these this fruit comes forward. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the flesh 
with its passions and desires. I love it that he uses the word crucified. It's like we've taken it and just nailed it on that cross. It's dead. It's no more a part of us. Shouldn't shouldn't um, consume us or destroy us anymore. Um, and, and it means they we who belong to Jesus have by our own free will we did it. Okay, God just didn't take it away. We submitted it to Him and then took it and crucified it. Um, it's 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 an act of the will. It's something you did. Um. You know, there's things you got to do. You know, we just, we sometimes have this idea that being a Christian, that God just comes and dumps all this stuff on you, and you just, all you got to do is sit there and be the sponge and receive it. You know, no, you got to do something too, okay? You got to put yourself in the place to be blessed and show up with God's people. You got to pray. I mean, you got to have a little bit of discipline. Um, he says, yeah, you have to crucify the flesh with its passions and desires. And you got to say, no, I'm not going there. And then do it. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step uh, with the Spirit. Follow the Spirit. Go where the Spirit leads. Let us, let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Well, pretty good stuff, isn't it? Got three truths for you today. I know that surprises you. But um, first one is believers have two natures that still wage war with one another. When you become a Christian, it didn't just go away. It's still there. You still have to fight the battle. The nature that you feed will be stronger and the other one will be weaker. So I'm going to ask you today, which one are you feeding? Hmm? Are you feeding the flesh or are you submitting to the spirit and letting your spiritual nature take control? you got a choice there. Second truth is works will not make you right with the Lord as to salvation, but the Lord does care how you live out your faith. He's equipped you. He's given you everything you need. You just need to let him do what he wants to do. Set him loose. Don't block the spirit. Third truth is as believers, we possess all the fruit of the Spirit. We got all of those different points. But these traits can be stifled. We can put a lid on them by our will. So let's, un, uh, let's let him do what he wants to do. Let's feed the uh, Spirit and not the flesh. All right, let's pray. Jesus, we love you. Uh, we trust you. We submit to you and your spirit. I pray that we'd show all of the fruit of the spirit. Um, I pray that that would bless you, bless us, and bless people around us. We love you and we trust you. In your name I pray. Amen. God bless you. You have a great week. I'll see you next week.